Hello and welcome to module 12, Wireless LAN Concepts. All right, don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're all done. All right, so, in, so we're starting a new course into wireless. And uh, so let's get busy. Let me just uh, hit the slides for a second. There we go. All right, so what are the benefits of wireless? Why would you? Why is it one of the fastest growing fields in IT? And the reason is, it is mobility, not being um, restricted to a desk, so being able to move around freely, and uh, and of course being connected at the same time. The drawbacks of wireless, if someone ever asked you, is really speed and security, and both they've been working very very heavily the ieee 802.11i at the end because they those are the ones that are responsible for securing wireless networks they have worked uh, tirelessly on protecting uh, wireless networks and there's the new wpa3 which is really the latest and the greatest um, I don't even want to say it's even better than WPA2 because WPA2 is another very strong encryption uh, method for wireless networks. But uh, security is not a really a big issue. The really biggest problem in terms of security when it comes to wireless is denial of service attacks. But, uh, but it's still worth it. And speed is coming. Speed we're talking about with the 802.11.1x nowadays, it's... Um, it's going to be four times as as, as fast as uh, uh, the AC. All right, we'll get we'll, we'll get to talk about that in a few. All right, the 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 categories. There are four categories in wireless networks, just like the wired LAN. You have the wireless personal area network. Please write those down. Um, the wireless LAN, the 802.11. You got the wireless MAN, metropolitan area network. And the wireless wide area network. So when it comes to the uh, personal area network, uh, we're talking about the 802.11.15. Uh, that's the Bluetooth and the Zigbee. That's the new um, protocol. And we're talking about from 20 to 30 feet. And mostly used for peer-to-peer -peer connections and anything that requires very low power. Uh, the 802.11, which is mainly for um, either small office, home office, the Soho, uh, home networks, or even an enterprise network. All right, we're talking about the distance is 30 feet. Mainly, you could do peer-to-peer -peer with uh, wireless LANs, an ad hoc, but we're mainly required for uh, to connect wireless devices to a wired network. Then we got the uh, the metropolitan area network. This is for our large geographic areas. This is, uh, we're talking about approximately 30 miles. This is the 802.16. Uh, the WiMAX uh, uh, gives us up to 30 miles, the 802.16. WiMAX stands for Worldwide Interoperability for micro, Microwave Access. All right, and finally, the fourth category is the wireless white area network this is when we're talking about cellular G or gsm can uh, cellular phones uh cdma the code division multiple access and so on all right uh so there's your bluetooth the cell connections the gsms the cdmas and the satellites all right here are the flavors of the 802.11, and that's what we're primarily going to be talking about in this course, uh, this chapter and the, the following chapter as well. All right, so please write these down. At least you need to know where they are, where they came from. I mean, what frequency they are operating. So the first, the very first one is the 802.11. It operated at 2.4 gigahertz. You don't have, you, if you want to, and it's probably a good idea to take a snippet out of this and put it into your uh, into your document. So if you don't want to write the whole thing out. Uh, it's a 2.4 gigahertz, and you can get up to 2 megabits per second. Later on, what they did is they got the 802.11a, operated at 
higher frequency. The higher the frequency you're operating, the higher the bandwidth. And they did achieve up to 54 megabit bandwidth, but it was not bad. It was not backward compatible to 802.11. B came back to 2.4, right? Um, the frequency was longer range than 802.11a, and it better penetrated into buildings. Uh, but it wasn't backward compatible to A either. So this is, this is a problem when they are not backward compatible. When G came around, G was backward compatible to B, and it gave us back the 54 megabits per second, which was nice. This was around for a while. Then uh, 802.11n, I remember in 2009, it was ratified around August, if I'm not mistaken. All right, boosted up the... The speed up to 600 megabits per second. This is when we introduced the MIMO, the multiple input, multiple output, multiple antennas, and being able to, to give us the throughput of 600 megabits per second, theoretically, actually. AC is what we, what we got now. Operates at 5 gigahertz. And you can get close to 1.3 gigabits per second. And it uses MIMOs. It uses the 8. Up to eight antennas. It uses uh, frame aggregations, uh, frame bonding. You know, you use uh, not frame bonding, channel bonding. You know, if there's channels around you that's not being used, you use that up. And the new 802.11x. This was out late last year in 2019, and uh, this is the latest and the greatest. And it's four times as fast as AC. Theoretically, you can get. Get it to. All right, moving on. Radio frequencies are electromagnetic waves. So we're going down from the low frequency. This is low frequency. The higher frequency you get per second. The higher the cycles per second. Here's a couple of things you need to know. The faster the frequency, the more data you can transmit. The more uh, throughput. The more bandwidth. The drawback of faster frequency is that uh, it's it lasts for a short distance. So uh, if you need to go very long distance, you have to really give it a lot of power, and a lot of power you know generates heat and all those wonderful things. But the, so um, and it does that. So the lower the frequency, less data, but it goes farther. All right. So we're operating around here. So. We got the radio, the TVs, the microwaves, the satellites, the phones operate about 1.9 megabits per second. I'm sorry, 1. gigabits per second. Then we got the visible light from 4.7 times 10 to the 14th, to about 7 times 10 to the 14th, all the different colors. So your eye is really um, a filter of the, these magnetic waves. The higher the frequency, the more harmful it's going to be, of course. All right. And the different standard organizations that governs the wireless is the ITU that regu regulates, please write that down. See, the ITU regulates the uh, satellites and the radio spectrum around the world. The IEEE mainly hold the standards, the 802 st series standards, and that's for the land and man standards. So if you need to know anything on that local area network and metropolitan area networks, wireless or wired, you go to the IEEE 802.series standards. And then you got the Wi-Fi Alliance. This is really a whole bunch of uh, vendors that got together and uh, to improve vendors working together to improve the 802.11 standard. All right, let's take a look at some of the components. Uh, you're probably familiar with some of these. We got the wireless snakes. You know, they could be integrated or ex external, uh, external, as you can see in a USB. But most devices have them integrated, which means it's part of the motherboard, and typically they are faster. In some instances, when we, uh, for example, when when we um, 
Julian Arendt as an ethical hacker in one of our classes, future classes, we will get another card like this to enable us to act like a, the evil twin or create a fake um, access point. But that's for another class. Then you've got the home router. You're probably familiar with this. You got uh, then you got the the home router acts as a router to send your data as a default gateway to the outside world. It acts as a switch. These are wired switch, and it acts as a router, a wireless router to interconnect. I'm um, saying to, uh, to connect wireless devices and connect them to the internet. Uh, then you got the access points that you probably see in your classrooms. Access points typically are controlled by a wireless controller. You really, we really don't uh, configure them. A wireless controller configures them and we access our data or the internet through the access point. The access point is more for, of an enterprise type of uh, you can make, think of it as a router, and it allows us to have a very long range of um, connections. So we're not limited to 30 feet or 300 feet. So if you have a big building, you probably want to connect access points to allow you to, uh, that is controlled by a, uh, a controller, a wireless controller. In fact, we're going to dedicate the following chapter, chapter 13, on um, wireless configuration, and we'll spend the whole chapter configuring a net wireless network with access points and a wireless controller in the whole nine yards. You'll be able to do all of that. And so here is a typical, there is two types of categories for when it comes to access points. There is the autonomous APs. They work alone, nobody bothers them, right? And then you got the controller base. This is the most uh, typical of what you have in um, an enterprise network, like on campus. These, the ones that I showed you previously, are the lightweight access points. That means they don't do anything. You can't connect to them. They have to be connected through um, a controller. And the controller is the one that feeds them all the information. and and configures and so we actually work on the controller configure the controller and the controller will send all the information needed to the lightweight access point. they call them lightweight because we really don't do anything with them we don't configure them it's the controller that does all of that work all right then we got the types of antennas here we have um the three types, so please write those down. The omnidirectional, that means it, it, it covers 360 degrees. It's equal in all directions. Then you got the directional antennas, such as um, the Yagi and the parabolic dish. And then we got the MIMO, the multi-input, multi-outputs, right? Like here, that, go, that boosts the bandwidth. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here, and on our next video, we'll start with the wireless LAN operations. So please write everything down and submit it. Everything I asked you to write up and submit that as homework, and I'll see you on the next video.